there has been a sudden surge in white lung cases among Chinese children, and hospitals are overwhelmed. A hospital in Nanjing performed 70 thyroid cancer operations in seven days, with half of the patients being very young. A Chinese company was reported to have sent steel pipes resembling artillery shells to the Middle East. WM Motors chairman fled to the US, leaving behind more than 40 billion yuan in debt. It's all covered in today's China Truths. There has been a sudden surge in white lung cases among Chinese children, and hospitals are overwhelmed. China is currently grappling with a significant upsurge in cases of mycoplasma pneumonia, a respiratory ailment primarily affecting children, leading to a surge in cases of big white lung. Hospitals across various cities, including Beijing, Shanghai, Suzhou, Nanjing, Zhengzhou, and Hunan, find themselves inundated with patients experiencing severe respiratory distress, necessitating oxygen support. The Beijing Center for Disease Control and Prevention has warned that the incidence of mycoplasma pneumonia in the region is at a critical juncture, with expectations that cases will peak in November. Disturbing videos circulating on Chinese social media platforms depict a grim picture of parents flocking to Beijing Children's Hospital, their children in tow, desperately seeking medical attention. Parents have lamented that, on weekends, a typical medical visit at Beijing Children's Hospital entails a grueling wait of no less than six hours, leading to profound discomfort for both children and their caregivers while the medical staff grapple with extraordinary workloads. Similarly, the Shanghai Children's Hospital has reached its limits, with a video illustrating a packed hospital environment where both adults and children are masked and waiting for treatment. A resident in Shanghai whose child contracted the illness recounted a harrowing experience, noting that the virus led to persistent high fevers ranging from 39 to 40 degrees Celsius, lasting for three to five consecutive days. Suzhou Children's Hospital in Jiangsu Province, situated near Shanghai, is also grappling with an overwhelming influx of patients. A video reveals that, by 8 p.m., the queue at the Suzhou Children's Hospital's emergency department had extended to the entrance gate, and the overcrowding persisted past midnight, with children receiving treatment under a large tree outside the facility. Another video showcases the overcrowded Wujiang Children's Hospital in Suzhou, with doctors on day shifts continuously receiving calls while emergency physicians working night shifts find themselves unable to attend to all cases. A resident shared that the strain on the healthcare staff was palpable, even leading some nurses to tears due to the immense pressure. The Children's Hospital in Nanjing, Jiangsu Province, also finds itself grappling with an enormous influx of patients, a situation echoed in hospitals across several regions. In Zhengzhou, Hunan Province, a similar strain on healthcare resources was evident, with reports of an acute shortage of available hospital beds. One parent, desperate to secure care for their child, described their early morning visit to the outpatient clinic, where they endured a three-day wait before finally gaining admission to the hospital. In a disconcerting twist, some parents disclosed that their children had contracted both mycoplasma and influenza A viruses. Concerns have also arisen about the possible co-infection of mycoplasma pneumonia with COVID-19. In response to this query, a parent shared that their child had previously battled a COVID-19 infection several years ago. A pediatrician further emphasized the gravity of the current wave of mycoplasma pneumonia, noting its sudden onset and unpredictability. Children may experience fever or none at all, followed by a cough and the development of white lungs within three to five days. Left untreated, this condition can lead to a loss of respiratory function, and in extreme cases, it may even jeopardize a child's life. The director of the respiratory department at Hunan Children's Hospital issued a stark warning about the disease, underscoring that there is no permanent immunity to mycoplasma pneumonia and that reinfections can occur. Furthermore, it's important to recognize that mycoplasma pneumonia is not confined to children alone, as adults can also fall victim to this infection. The situation is becoming increasingly critical, affecting a wide range of age groups. Adults in their 30s, not just children, have reported falling victim to the ailment. Symptoms, including fever and increased phlegm production, can escalate to a pneumonia diagnosis within a remarkably short span of just four days. Online comments reflect growing anxiety as individuals recount their experiences with mycoplasma pneumonia, a condition that has made an unexpected return, 
raising questions about its connection with the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. Reports indicate that mainland China is currently experiencing a fresh wave of the epidemic, resulting in numerous deaths, including individuals from various professions and affiliations, such as university experts, corporate executives, and police officers. Master Li Hongji, the founder of Falun Gong, has recently stated that the COVID-19 virus primarily targets Communist Party members and those closely aligned with the party's interests. This revelation has ignited further debates on the CCP's management of the pandemic, with claims of a three-year-long cover-up since its initial outbreak and an alarming death toll of 400 million people in China. A hospital in Nanjing performed 70 thyroid cancer operations in seven days, with half of the patients being very young. A surge in cancer cases, particularly among young individuals, has been a growing concern in mainland China. As reported by Red Star News, between October 7 and 13, the Jiangsu Provincial Hospital of Integrated Traditional Chinese and Western Medicine in Nanjing conducted a remarkable total of 70 thyroid cancer surgeries within just one week. Notably, almost half of the patients undergoing these procedures were individuals in their 20s and 30s, with the youngest patient being a mere 11 years old. This situation gained considerable attention on the popular social media platform Weibo. Dr. Chen Tao, the chief physician overseeing the hospital's thyroid and breast surgery departments, offered some insight into this concerning trend. In their clinical practice, medical professionals have also come across patients with small thyroid cancers that have already metastasized to a significant extent. Dr. Chen Tao shared the example of a patient with multiple thyroid nodules, including two malignant ones, each less than one centimeter in diameter. Surprisingly, these tiny nodules had invaded the recurrent laryngeal nerve. In this context, several Weibo users have raised concerns about the extended wait times for thyroid cancer patients in certain hospitals. One user shared a perplexing coincidence, saying, My cousin had thyroid cancer last year, and this year, another cousin has it too. Both required surgery. It's hard to fathom the coincidence. In response to the rising incidence of cancer among young people, one user exclaimed, I'm afraid to browse TikTok anymore. Why are so many young individuals being diagnosed with cancer? Some netizens extended the discussion to other health issues, with one remarking, this year's health assessments for incoming university freshmen have unveiled a disturbing prevalence of heart problems and myocarditis among students. Many young individuals are grappling with heart-related issues, specifically myocarditis, along with its various consequences. Lately, a new term, crispy college students, has gained traction on the internet. According to a report by Observer.com on October 10, this term characterizes the present generation of college students. Despite their youth, they are confronting numerous physical ailments, making them exceptionally fragile and susceptible to health setbacks. The crispy skin phenomenon has become a growing concern. In September, a hospital in Zhengzhou, located in Hunan province, recorded an influx of more than 1,700 cases involving young individuals aged 18 to 25, who presented symptoms such as trauma, abdominal pain, chest tightness, and hyperventilation syndrome. Some Weibo users shared their unusual experiences, including one who noted, I was attempting to stifle laughter while watching a short video, and my nasal artery ruptured, causing profuse bleeding, ultimately requiring a hospital visit. Notably, in a video posted on July 6 by a self-proclaimed renowned health and wellness blogger from mainland China, known as military Dr. Zhou Xiaofeng, he declared, Urgent news, cancer is on the rise among young individuals. It appears that this trend can no longer be suppressed. In fact, scientists foresaw the current situation two years ago, but many of them met untimely fates. The blogger went on to explain that while the entire internet and the public are actively seeking explanations, the true underlying causes remain off-limits for open discussion online. He affirmed, I am committed to sharing only the unvarnished truth and information that can't be concealed because I have no tolerance for baseless claims. A Chinese company was reported to have sent steel pipes resembling artillery shells to the Middle East. On October 7, during the Hamas assault on Israel, a substantial number of rockets were fired. The origin of these rockets has come under scrutiny, and a video leaked on Chinese social media showed a Middle Eastern customer customizing what appeared to be guardrails from a Chinese company. 
the video depicted neatly stacked steel pipes used in the assembly of these guardrails. Each steel pipe had two iron rings welded to its ends, suggesting they could be assembled into temporary guardrails when erected on the ground and connected with ropes or chains. However, the design of the steel pipe's base raised concerns. It consisted of four roughly triangular iron pieces welded to the end of the steel pipe. Many individuals on social media have pointed out that the base of these steel pipes bears a resemblance to the tail fins of artillery shells and there are similarities in terms of caliber and overall shape with rockets. These observations have added to the intrigue surrounding the situation. There is ongoing speculation about the potential use of steel pipes by Middle Eastern terrorists for crafting homemade rockets. There are also suspicions regarding the source of the rockets employed by Hamas, with some netizens uncovering an official report from the Chinese Communist Party. This report stated that, in the first quarter of the year, Two steel pipe factories in Jiangdu District, Yangzhou City, Jiangsu Province, had seen a significant increase of 205% in the total value of seamless steel pipes exported to the Middle East compared to the previous year. Additional reports have surfaced, including information received by the self-media program Newswatch, suggesting that a substantial portion, approximately 90%, of Hamas's smaller missiles and drones have Chinese origins with the Chinese Communist Party allegedly using everyday items as a cover for clandestine transfers to Hamas. Nevertheless, the precise composition of the rockets used by Hamas in their recent attacks remains uncertain. Some analysts argue that the sheer volume of rockets fired by Hamas over a short period may not align with the characteristics of homemade rockets and could instead indicate the use of standard weaponry surreptitiously provided by the Chinese Communist Army. It's worth noting that before these developments, there had been prior instances of Hamas utilizing Chinese steel pipes in the production of rudimentary rockets. Over a decade ago, projectiles labeled Shandong Lian Steel Pipe Factory were discovered on the Israeli-Palestinian battlefield, fueling public suspicions that the Chinese Communist Party might be using ostensibly civilian supplies to support Hamas. During the earlier incident, Shandong Lian Steel Pipe Factory claimed that the steel pipes in question were exported to a Middle Eastern country to lay gas pipelines. However, they disavowed any knowledge of how these steel pipes were subsequently repurposed into weapons by unidentified individuals. There has also been a previous rumor that, following Israel's withdrawal from the Gaza Strip in 2005, Hamas unearthed a substantial number of pipes from the underground infrastructure of Gaza. These pipes were then adapted for the construction of what are often referred to as homemade rockets. In addition to these steel rockets, it's worth noting that Hamas and other Middle Eastern terrorist organizations have been known to use gas canisters to create a significant quantity of what they call hell cannons. These devices involve welding tail fins to gas cans, cutting and modifying them, and then filling them with explosives and fuses. This gas tank cannon is recognized for its considerable destructive power. However, similar to the steel rocket, it tends to suffer from limitations in terms of range and accuracy. According to reports in Chinese media, a significant portion of the gas canisters utilized in the construction of hell cannons can be traced back to China. An individual named Mr. Kong initiated the export of obsolete gas canisters to the Middle East in 2017, ultimately amassing substantial wealth. In addition to sourcing many raw materials from China, it is suggested that the innovative methods employed by Middle Eastern terrorists in crafting homemade bombs may also be influenced by the Chinese Communist Party. Interestingly, this practice of repurposing gas canisters has historical roots dating back to the time of the Chinese Civil War between the Kuomintang and the Communist Party. The Chinese Communist Army, during that period, used gasoline barrels to fashion what was termed a heartless cannon or flying thunder cannon. This involved using gasoline barrels as makeshift cannon barrels to launch explosive devices, which were employed in attacks against Kuomintang troops. It's worth noting that the ideology guiding various terrorist organizations worldwide often exhibits some influence from communist elements. Many of these groups are believed to be manipulated by shadowy figures associated with Chinese and Russian interests. 
Notably, the Chinese Communist Party's publication, Southern Weekend, reported in 2010 that the Afghan Taliban considered the selected works of Mao Zedong and on protracted war as essential readings, with most of their tactics derived from Mao Zedong's strategies. The Taliban relied on the approach of encircling cities from rural areas and adhered to guerrilla warfare for two decades, eventually regaining power. Subsequently, the Chinese Communist Party's foreign propaganda issued a document asserting that the Taliban's rise to power was influenced by Mao Zedong's philosophy. WM Motors chairman fled to the U.S., leaving behind more than 40 billion yuan in debt. In the backdrop of WM Motor, a well-financed entrant in the Chinese automotive industry, filing for bankruptcy, there are reports suggesting that Mr. Xinhui, the founder and chairman of WM Motor, has fled to the United States, leaving behind 40 billion yuan, approximately 5.47 billion US dollars. His escape has triggered considerable turmoil, encompassing substantial financial investments, unpaid debts, and overdue salaries for employees. It was found that Xinhui made a Weibo post on October 9, saying, This week, I went on a business trip to Munich and then New York. Good things come to those who wait. However, insiders familiar with the situation have disclosed that there are individuals in Beijing managing Weibo updates on behalf of Xinhui. In actuality, Xin hasn't been seen at the company since the Chinese New Year this year, and his family had already moved to the United States. Currently, numerous WM employees have faced a dire situation, with some not receiving their due wages. A group of automotive engineers and software experts found themselves resorting to holding banners to demand their unpaid salaries. The predicament extended even to WM Motors vehicle owners, who encountered malfunctioning car systems that refused to start. The news of Xinhui leaving China with a 40 billion yuan debt has sparked discussions among Chinese internet users. Comments such as when WM applied for bankruptcy, I suspected something was amiss, and it seems like a golden cicada shedding its shell and expressions like running away and absconded surfaced. Some users even expressed concerns that the entire automobile industry might be on the verge of turmoil, citing instances where their friends working at WM Motor still awaited their overdue salaries. This development has sparked concerns that the automotive sector might be on the brink of a crisis. As previously reported, WM Motor was once the golden child of the investment world, with companies like Baidu, Tencent, and Sequoia Capital all having invested in the company, amassing a total of 41 billion yuan in financing. However, WM Motor's attempts to go public in Hong Kong have faced continuous hurdles. Over the past year, WM Motor has been bombarded with a slew of negative reports, including a substantial decline in sales, factory closures, employee wage disputes, and customer clamors for spare parts. In February of this year, WM Motor encountered operational challenges and was reported to have initiated a complete suspension of salaries while retaining employment. There were even accounts of WM Motor employees resorting to online protests to demand their wages. On February 17, Xinhui issued a statement acknowledging the company's difficulties. On October 7, the Shanghai Third Intermediate People's Court accepted WM Motor Technology Group's application for pre-reorganization. On October 10, the China Enterprise Bankruptcy and Reorganization Case Information Network announced that WM Motor had applied for bankruptcy reorganization. In the past couple of years, various industries, including Evergrande, Country Garden, and WM Motor, have experienced significant crises. This has extended from the education and real estate sectors to the automotive industry. Even local gyms and fruit shops have witnessed some owners disappearing abruptly. Some business owners have fled the country, leaving behind unresolved debt disputes. Don't forget to leave a comment in the section below to share your opinions on today's topic with us. Make sure to like and subscribe to see more interesting topics from China Truths. Thank you.